Hello, welcome to one more exciting video today and uh, today I have a very exciting uh, friend of mine, a fellow colleague, Mr. Govind Raj, who is a passionate uh, realtor, golfer, an avid yoga student and also a badminton player. When people say, I am stuck with the property, he says, bring it on, especially uh, when it comes to lands. He is a master in understanding of bylaws of sanction authorities such as BBMP, BDA or even B BMRDA. He is a proud father of two sons, one becoming a doctor soon and the other is an aspiring chartered accountant. His desire is to play 100 different golf courses around the world. Fantastic uh, Mr. Govindraj. Govindraj is also one of the senior most affiliate partner with Kolal Banker right here at Jayanagar, Bangalore and sir, welcome to the channel today. Thank you Balaji. So, how it's are you feeling? It's a pleasure to be on your show. I know you have a lot of followers, so hopefully I will be of some help to them. Absolutely sir, it's, it's, it's a honor uh, me talking to you today and um, how are you feeling today? How is the business? How is the real estate market? Uh, Post-Covid, uh, things are getting better. I think uh, next uh, three years should be doing very well. So I have a series of questions to ask to Mr. Uh, Govindraj. Um, as I introduce you to you all that uh, he is a master in understanding the bylaws and as well uh, he loves lands. So here at Kolil Banker, he is the specialist when it comes to the land deals and we all go to him when it comes to a blockbuster land deal. So, so here is my first question to you Mr. Govindraj. Uh, the basic question probably uh, people ask me and ask you also all the time sir plot land so the basic question is what is a plot or what is a land what is the difference between these two so large parcels of areas which is like one acre two acres and much more we usually call this lands and anything which is a part of this acre like a 30 40 40 60 or a 50 80 or a little bigger size also we call that plots. So, in general, the moment you say land, it is an agriculture land is the understanding. So, this is the basic difference between uh, a land and a plot. So, picking right from there, so you mean to say uh, a smaller portion of the land is called a plot and a bigger portion of the land, you know, anything which is bigger, bigger. in is acres is called Okay, land. okay. Yes. So, can we also say that uh, a land which is developed and further bifurcated is all uh, plots, plots yes. and the land which is never developed is a land, basically yes. a big portion of land. You are correct. And uh, basically, uh, plots are in measured in square footages, yes. especially in Karnataka and in Bangalore city. Correct. And uh, lands are measured in hectares or um, acres, acres and guntas in Karnataka. A acres and guntas. Just for, I know how much it is per acre. Just for the understanding of the audience, one acre yeah. is one equal acre to… is equal to 40 guntas and each uh, gunta will have 1089 square foot and one acre of uh, land will have 43,560 square foot of land. Wow, great. My next question, what are the types of uh, lands available? Because I know when it comes to the plots, we say, sir, BDA plot, give us some BDA plot or give us some gated community plots or a BMRD approved plot and all. But uh, when it comes to land, uh, everyone are puzzled. So, what are the types of lands available? Okay. Uh, when you say land, generally by default all lands are agriculture status holding land. What the developer has to do is go to the DC and get it converted from non agriculture to non-agriculture uh, status. Only then it is ready for development. Okay. So, we have uh, the local authority, say for in Bangalore, we have Bangalore Development Authority, which periodically releases a comprehensive development uh, plan. In this, there are certain zonal regulations. We have to see the survey number and your village name and check in the CDP as to which zone is your property land, land okay. is into. Right. It could be in yellow zone, which is a residential. It could be in uh, violet color which is uh, high tech and industrial. It could be in red zone which is semi-public and public properties. So if it is in green that means it is in uh, agriculture status only. You can't do any conversion for these properties. Okay, so a lot of colors there. 
So, one more, let's brush up on these colors. So, what are zonings basically? What are the specific, you said some yellow, green. So, just can you just elaborate? Okay. Uh, uh, the the uh, architect, I could call BD as the architects of Bangalore. They have a vision for next 15 years or 20 years as to how Bangalore should develop. So, based on those experts, they want certain area to be residentially developed. They want certain lung space, so they keep that as green space. So no development can happen there. So yellow is residential, uh, red is industrial. So you have green as agriculture. So different colors. So we have a whole range. Uh, okay. So if uh, based on zonal regulations. Okay. So if I have to pick that, uh, pick something from there. The CDP is basically a map. Uh, yes. which will have several uh, boundaries Zone. and zones and colored uh, highlighters which from where yes. uh, using the survey numbers we will identify where our land exactly which, falls in which, which zone. zone. Yes sir. Absolutely. So here is my next question for you because many of them have asked me uh, can I buy a land next to a forest? Can I buy a land uh, uh, very close to the Nala and all. So, uh, there's a lot of uh, NGT related issues have cropped up uh, off late, uh, especially within the Bangalore city itself. Can you elaborate on the buffer zones? What are What is a buffer zone actually? Thanks to the IT revolution in Bangalore, property prices have rocketed up. So, people want to use every inch of land or every inch of property they have paid for. So, this is causing problem and they want to acquire everything under construction. So, NGT, uh, the reason uh, why NGT is in focus is you must have heard or known that Bangalore had lot of floodings. Right. Okay. So, the lakes in Bangalore or around Bangalore are interconnected. When one is filled, it overflows to the other one. So, this nalas which were supposed to overflow the water was all under construction. That is when this NGT came in and said, you have to have a no development zone which is the buffer zone around these lakes, nalas and drains. So that is when people got into problem, say or people got to know about these buffer zones. Okay. okay. There is a 30 meter ban on development around these places. Right, right. So the major uh, factors are the drains, the primary uh, uh, drains, drains and uh, maybe the lakes and uh, maybe the abetting uh, forest uh, within the city yes and any other uh, zones any other uh... we also have some places where there's a river stream going right so even around those places we have restrictions okay awesome so this comes to one more uh, common questions uh, which uh, my audiences have been asking the common litigations because the moment you say plots the BDA plots or whichever approved plots, you don't have much litigations that side. And uh, vetting the titles for such plots is also pretty easy compared to lands. Uh, when uh, getting into the lands, most of the lands are litigated lands. So what are the common litigations which you have been seeing uh, when it comes to land deals? Bigger land deals usually uh, take some time for uh, the process to complete. So people, uh, usually the lands are ancestral property wherein all the family members would have not signed or people giving wrong family tree lineage so that one person is left out. So these are common things uh, which we have seen and most of the time is the terms and conditions are not met by both the parties. So that get into litigation. Another one more uh, common litigation uh, which I have been hearing in the market uh, is the constant encroachment of uh, the neighbors or the adjacent uh, landowners or the other developments which is happening uh, because maybe the survey is not done properly or the entire survey is juggled around and not utilized. What are your thoughts on that? See, uh, there is a very good system where each of the land is recognized by a survey number. Each survey number has a tipni copy in our taluk office, which is the Tasildar's office. We have a village map. We have survey department in the, uh, uh, what do you call, the, the taluk uh, office or the Tasildar's office. What people do is, it will cause them to have a boundary wall or to even mark these lands. So a lot of people earlier would have left it open now right. and it becomes a first mover advantage. If somebody is building first and he is okay to 
encroach in the neighboring property and he will come to know later when he comes for development right. by the time it is too late so this is how encroachments start right so uh, there is one more uh, encroachment which is rampant in the city in the developed part of the city where there is a open land and people just build the huts and uh, uh, you know they just move in uh, not one or two families but hundreds of fam families live in the land yes and uh, how do, how do we approach this how do you handle such uh, encroachments so that's little complicated it is called unauthorized occupation of these lands mm. so again uh, the labor class uh, coming from outside bangalore so uh, look at some empty plot and put in their hutments and later when the owner has to clear them mm. they have got into lot of problems but again these are things happening so you clear them they go and sit in another property okay. so this continues okay great on my previous question you answered one uh, thing where uh, i found this you said uh, generally these lands are ancestral lands uh, what are the other different types of lands like you know there are some especially in mysore and bangalore there are grant lands and all can you elaborate on uh, the types of uh, land lineage the government of karnataka i think from i have heard from 1920 there was a famine in 1920 where the government announced grow more food scheme and granted lands to farmers mm. so this grant of land starts from there mm. okay in 1977 uh, there was a tenancy act mm. where in who is the farmer he gets the land so there are a lot of uh, there are some schedule ka schedule tribe uh, grant lands so for different uh, reason government has granted lands so it depends if they have the original certificate grant certificate uh, i think uh, for this they need to definitely go to a advocate right to show him all the documents and then take the next step when they are buying these kind of properties great so which uh, leads me to the next part of the question uh, which part of bangalore is really growing and where do you find abandoned lands in such uh, grown areas and uh, is it really worth buying lands there the investment in land is always profitable so you have to buy and hold it for a certain period of time to see some kind of an appreciation with regard to developments in bangalore because of the it corridor east bangalore is developing very well we also have south which is like extension of our core south bangalore and now because of the airport north bangalore is also picking and doing very well okay so east bangalore can we specify the localities like uh, anything starting from indranagar towards whitefield vartur sajjapur road hoskote all right. these areas are all doing very well sir right awesome so i want to ask you is it worth really buying there you answered in one short uh, crisp uh, statement but can you elaborate on that uh, is it really worth buying a land in bangalore as a whole and does land ever loses its value 100% you can invest on land and in bangalore always go through a reputed uh, real estate agents like coldwell banker and also vet your documents through a good advocate so when someone wishes to sell their land they may have ancestral land or grant land or whatever lands which they hold uh, in their family for so many years and they want to sell today at this market condition what are the points to note before such sale okay whenever a customer comes to us what we do is we first go through their document file so a lot of people would have not updated their documents so we help them understand what documents is required what in the eyes of a customer document should be or an advocate's list would look like so the primary scrutiny of documents we will do at our end and only in the second phase we take it to an advocate so this is how we help people set their property leads me to another very important question um, where the government itself litigates or i would say uh, wants to acquire lands from the private owners so for what reasons uh, the government bodies acquire lands and why there is a tuffle between the uh, land owners and the government body and if at all uh, they are successful in giving the land back to the government for what reason they acquire such lands okay the government acquires for different reasons one is for the city's infrastructure where they need to expand roads 
build in new roads like the outer ring road was done now they are also doing the satellite uh, town uh, ring roads outer uh, peripheral ring roads so there are different reasons why government acquires inside the city so outside the city there are places like our narsapura which is now developed into a new auto hub lot of automobile companies are coming there they also have another uh, food park in uh, tumkur which is uh, with a japanese collaboration we also have heard about an apparel park in dodbalapur and even our famous electronic city also it was acquired by government and given to all the companies right uh, as this so government uh, also our bda acquires land to make all the layouts even our office where we have jayanagar is also a bda layout which was acquired long ago and allotted to people right right so much of lands even today in a very very developed city like bangalore we can see so much of open lands big land parcels so what are these uh, getting uh, developed into already we have seen fantastic developments in this city like uh, government acquires for roads and parks and uh, what not um, there are so many other land parcels available and what are the opportunities for these land parcels and how it gets transformed in a city like bangalore okay it's always a demand and supply as the demand increases we have seen couple of uh, industries moving away and coming up with residential developments i can name a, a couple of uh, famous ones you had a kirloskar factory in rajajinagar which got converted into a orion mall and the brigade gateway with the wc coming there oh yeah, uh, yeah. so we had the phoenix a mall which is in white field that also was a factory earlier right. and famous kodes uh, factory on kanakpura road is now developed into falcon city so we have different uh, uh, reasons why uh, we also having our uh, lnt factory which was on balari road on the way to our international airport getting converted into a residential apartment and a beautiful mall also is coming there soon excellent so there is a huge opportunity for land owners to monetize their lands into whatever whichever zone it belongs to yes. gets converted into that yes. right so this leads uh, me to one more question very important question if you are a buyer of uh, and uh, aspiring to buy a lands um, to the audience what are the things to consider while purchasing a land in bangalore Uh, when you are buying a land there are basic points which you have to look at number 1 is the location number 2 is the price and most important number 3 is the developments around it mm. and always make sure you are not buying something close to the lake or a forest land because some restrictions are there around the flight path mm. around the airport yeah so these are little technical things so that is why we always suggest that you go through an expert and at coldwell bankers we are always there to help you so we had a fantastic uh, discussion so far with uh, my friend uh, govindraj thank you so much for your time uh, mr you govindraj so now what are your closing thoughts when it comes to dealing with lands i would say two things buying a plot is little easy okay so you will have to look at uh, the sanctioning authority and the documents and in case you are taking a Uh, bank loan to buy the property so bank will scrutinize most of your documents but when it comes to land it is little a laborious process wherein we have to go with the mother deed uh, we have previous documents acquisitions uh, details everything we have to do so we are always here for a consultative uh, discussion please approach us and we will definitely help you in buying or selling your properties and getting you at the right price either at the buyer or the seller so thank you mr govindraj it was thank a very very uh, crisp and uh, very meaningful discussion which we had today on the land i would say very basic uh, discussion which we had uh, on lands uh, especially within the bangalore uh, region and i'm sure you must have so much of uh, you know clarifications queries put all your thoughts on the comment section and uh, if at all if you really wanted to come and have a serious discussion govindraj is always here in this office right here at jayanagar 
uh, his uh, mobile uh, contact and also his email is flashing on the screen you can directly get in touch with him fix an appointment please uh, do have a no obligation meeting with him i'm sure he must be so much helpful to you he have been so much helpful to our agency firm so far so with that note uh, let me sign off and uh, say thank you to you as an audience watching this video and to mr govindraj our expert panel today and uh, yeah see you in my next video soon bye bye